Hey guys, last week we looked at the PWM circuit, works great, kind of. Uh, this week we're going to take a quick look at the Arduino sketch, um, written in Arduino language. Easy. And um, I'm going to tell you why I blew up my RGBTs, because I didn't use a snubber circuit. Oh! Anyway, we're going to talk all about snubber circuitry, um, dissipative and non-dissipative. Dissipative. <laughs> Dissipative. That's the that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, I hooked this up to a motor and it worked really well for about thirty seconds. And then one of the RGBT shorted out and the motor ran full power. So no matter where I Turned the pot, it just ran full power. <laughs> so, I'll show you how I fixed that and why that happened. We have a busted chip, we have a shorted, tr shorted RGBT. So, let's find out which one. What I'm going to do is just run some <laughs> where I've joined them all together. If you test them, it will test as one RGBT because essentially you've just made a big RGBT. So one or more of them is passing current through when they shouldn't be, in, you know, AKA shorted out internally. So instead of, now what I could do is unsolder all these wires, right? And I could test each one with an ohmmeter and see which one's shorted internally across the, across the pins. That would be easy enough because yellow and red there on one of these will be shorted and that'd be the bad one. Chuck it away, replace it. But I've got another method that saves a lot of time. If you've got a thermal imaging camera, uh, what you do is just run a little bit of current through all four, and obviously only the bad one will pass the current and AKA heat up, and that will show up on your thermal camera. So your thermal camera will show you which one the bad one is. There's a little trick for you. Thermal cameras, brilliant. Okay, so we've got a 20 volt supply. We've got our motor running through our little RGBT, which is nice and cool. And here's our waveform across the load. You can see the PWM, and it looks quite tidy, right? Here I am adjusting the PWM to full power. And down to a lower power. Nice. Everything's okay. Wow. What if I was to do this? Hold on. <gasps> What's that all about? Whoa. <laughs> cool, that just got hot. It's <laughs> still alive. What is this? Got off the scale. Let's look at this. 600 volts. That's approaching what this RGBT can handle. That's getting very warm now. Oh dear. Let's back that off straight away. So what's happening here then? Now, basically, let's, let's explain. With any type of inductor, um, as you... As you put power into an inductor a magnetic field is created, it builds up, so an inductor will lag current to voltage, so the voltage will appear across the inductor straight away, and then very quickly it will start to draw current as the inductor becomes saturated with a magnetic field. Now just as like you've got a coil and you swipe a magnet across it, it's going to produce a pulse of power. Yeah, pulse of voltage and current. The faster you swipe that magnet across that inductor, the higher the voltage spike. If you just, like, you know, ugh, lazily swipe a magnet across it, you'll get a tiny little bump on the scope. And if you really fast, if you, <laughs> if you really swipe a magnet past it, you're going to get a, a bigger spike. And what happens is, as you apply power to your inductor, 
um, as it charge, uh, charges up, yeah, let's just say charges up with magnetic field, it'll become saturated and it'll start to draw lots of current. So, very short pulses across as an inductor, where it will act as a low pass filter, so it won't it won't really let a lot of current pass. The the longer the pulse is, the more current will pass. Now, anyway, getting off the topic a little bit, what we're talking about here is when when you put your your power across that inductor, it it magnetizes, and that's a change in magnetism. It it's gone from being non-magnetic to magnetic. And when you release that power, you'll see a big spark. And that's because as you release that power, that magnetic charge has very quickly collapsed to nothing. And that is also a change. Exactly like you swiping a magnet across it. But except it happens so very, very, very fast. Really, really fast. So fast we're not going to get into it. That huge voltages are produced. And they will... They'll fry your poor little IGBT. You will not be happy with that at all. With any power electronics, um, especially switching inductive loads like we're doing, when we switch that off, we need to either dissipate that spike, um, which would be very wasteful, or put that put that spike uh, negative voltage spike back into the supply or into a capacitor or somewhere where it's useful so we make use of that spike it brings up system efficiency um, yeah that's it let's check it out so now we have a full RCD network snubber capacitor I've got two capacitors in parallel here I'll show you with just one and then I'll show you two uh, I've got the diodes as they were and resistor and capacitor network so, you can see the capacitor is limiting DV over DT now, quite a bit, which basically means the turn-off time is slower. If I add another capacitor, you see that curve just increased. See that curve there? And if I remove that capacitor and make it a smaller value, there you go. So, if we look at our waveform now, that's quite nice. Quite pleased with that. that. Now that IGBT's not having any problems. And you're still getting a you're still getting a bit of ring in there, but it's nothing to worry about. Let's say we're on 20 volt per div, we're getting 10 volts ringing. So that's nothing to worry about. I wouldn't worry about that. But yeah, there's your snubber circuit. Now this is a dissipative snubber circuit, which means. What's happening with this one is that negative spike is just being shorted through this diode. And these diodes will get hot. And what that's doing is wasting electricity. We don't want to waste it. That means our electric car will go less miles for a charge. We want it to be as, as efficient as possible. So, what we're going to do now is look at a non-lossy or non-dissipative snubber circuit. Check out this snubber. So, yeah, I'm using a different, uh, a different BJT because I blew the other one up. This one's on a heatsink. Uh, same setup as before, except now, instead of those uh, dodgy three little diodes, where have they gone? <laughs> Here they are. God, my desk is getting a mess. Right, instead of these, we've got a fairly high speed full bridge rectifier going on. So now any transients that are picked up get rectified into positive and negative. So you can you can put this across the MOSFET or the IGBT and any spikes that it receives it will rectify it so you can simply put your plus and minus back into the supply and I'll show you this working. Right so at the moment we have got a 45 volt DC supply at our main cap. So I'll take that off there. So, and I've got this pretty much just charging this uh, 370 volt DC cap. So if I just hook my voltmeter up to that, 
Let's see what we've got in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the capacitor. So I'm going to isolate this capacitor from the other one, and you'll see it charge up. Off, oh, there he goes, charging up nicely. You see, as the capacitor is charging up, it's allowing those back EMF spikes to get higher and higher and higher. At the moment, they're reaching 100 volts, and as, as shown here, the capacitor voltage is climbing up to 130 volts DC. And now you can see the, the back EMF spikes have gone well over 100 volts now. And it's reaching 140. So he's charging up that capacitor. All I'm going to do is, and literally, so we're taking that power, that's being that DC power. What we're doing, essentially, is instead of dissipating that back EMF spike and wasting it as heat across a resistor and a diode, we're we're using it to charge up this capacitor and put back into the main supply. See, so that capacitor is now pulled back down to voltage, back down to line voltage, um, bus voltage. So now we've got a very efficient controller. Not perfect, but much, much better. You see now on a very low PWM, we've got a spinning motor. If I remove that back EMF chopper thing, see our capacitor is charging straight back up. Horrible. Look at that, 200 volts. Nasty stuff. So you see, we are capturing that back EMF energy into that cap. And putting it somewhere useful. And he's pulled pull back down to bus voltage. I'll just show you one more time. I'll remove the capacitor from the main bus and isolate it. And you'll see it charging up. So the back EMF spikes are charging up that capacitor. And I'm going to reintroduce it to the bus. There he goes. Here's the Arduino. You see we've got this um, va uh, variable sensor value. And that's basically the value from the ADC, the 10-bit ADC, that's hooked up to the potentiometer. Now 10 bits means it can count from 0 to 1023. However, the output on the PWM is an 8-bit, which only goes up to 255. So if we simply divide 1023 by 255 we get 4.01 that's convenient so we can just plug in an integer of 4 into into our little calculation here so if we if we uh, monitor the PWM variable now on the serial print line and see the PWM equals sensor value divided by 4 all it's going to do is take the sensor value, the value inside the sensor value uh, variable, divide it by 4, and save it into the PWM variable. So now we should get a value between 0 and 255. There you go. See on the screen there. Which is perfect for our PWM output. And all we've got to do now is add one more bit of code, which simply puts that 255 puts that um, value into the IGBT variable, which is um, already set up as pin 9, variable uh, analog out. So with this code running, as you turn your pot up and down, it will vary the duty cycle on pin 9 as an output. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, a lot of these ideas, like the, like the lossless snubber and everything, will be carried on into the free phase. Um, motor driver so you are learning stuff about everything <laughs> that's the idea anyway please like give it a good old thumbs up a big old thumbs up if you can not just a little one and subscribe to my channel that would really help me out cheers guys bye